another way of dealing with this kind of problem is looking at um, using polylines. Now this is really the essence of, of topology and how topology works, although we won't in this instance be doing it in a topologically intact way, although I'll show how that would work later on. Um, Okay, let's start. So we're losing this on line topology in the first instance. So let's start to edit and we'll create that. Interesting. A line there. See, we're making sure we've got good, good overlap between everything, and a line all the way down here. Okay, and then a line all the way up here. And another line across, and another line across, and you see the gist. Okay. And now we save that. We stop the editing. And so we've got all this little crisscross pattern here. We've got a polygon here, whether it's in the house. But that's not a major problem because what we'll do now is do a thing called polygonizer. And we want that polygonizer to work on the polyline topology. And we will give it an output file name. So let's call polyline topology output. And then we can click on OK. Let's see what happens. Wow. And it's created 18 polygons. Do we want to load that layer? Yes, we do. Here we are. So now we've got this new layer called polyline topology output. We can edit it. We can select the feature that doesn't have a house underneath it if you can remember where that was and we can delete it okay and then we can save that and we can stop editing it and we can change the transparency so we can see through and look at the houses underneath so it's a pretty quick way of dealing with the topology and having all of our, our lines together now that if we had a much more complex boundary around these edges would be a much quicker way to deal with boundaries because it's in line with dealing with proper topology which is something I'll deal with in a later issue or sorry a later video okay thank you very much indeed